What's going on folks? So as you can see, I'm already partially through this project and that's because originally I didn't think I was gonna make a video on this. A, I'm not a professional automotive upholsterer and B, I don't really know how well this is gonna turn out in the end. However, if you hate G35 crack dashboards as much as I do, it's worth a shot. So let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and talk about how I got to this point right here. It was real simple, found a crack that had an opening in it, started pulling up on it, and it came off in bigger sheets than this. Quite easily, I might add. I mean, literally just large sections of it would just peel off, no trouble whatsoever. The only time I had little bits and pieces that were, you know, kind of a fight were in these little corners right here where I'd have to slowly peel them and pick them off and whatever. That's just where the vent goes anyways. But uh, there were a couple of areas that chunked and I was able to fill this with expanding foam from Home Depot and let it set up for 24 hours. Came back out, I took the blade off my little hacksaw and I just shimmied through the large chunk of it. Then I took 80 grit sandpaper and smoothed it off and I liked it a lot because the expanding foam is a lot harder than the surrounding foam. So the sandpaper goes through the rigid foam a lot easier and it sands it off a lot better than the surrounding. I think it's because the surrounding foam kind of just moves back and forth with the sandpaper and it doesn't actually remove material as much. So you're able to get this nice and level quite easily. And another thing that's kind of surprised me about this is you can see where the cracked vinyl was, but it didn't transfer through to the foam itself. It just kind of stained it. Like it doesn't pull apart like a crack. And the foam is still quite pliable. If you know anything about Dotsons or 240SXs or anything older, this stuff gets quite rigid and it kind of wants to crumble and break apart on you, but you now this stuff's actually in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and put some material on top of it now. For the material, I chose this premium marine grade vinyl leatherette. It does feel like real leather, which is pretty nice. It's four-way stretchable, so it'll go around compound curves a lot easier. It is scrim back, so it has this fabric that the adhesive can stick to a lot better as well as being UV stable so the sun's not gonna tear it apart. But even cooler is the color, sheen, and pattern is very close to infinity. Like, look at that, not obtrusive at all. So I think this is the winner. Now that the material's cut and draped over the dash, I can see what I'm working with. I think I'm gonna be very systematic in the application of the adhesive. So I wanna start in the middle and work my way out right and then work my way out left because the middle is going to be the hardest part since it has this recess down here that needs to be covered. So I wanna make sure that I can use the stretching capability of the vinyl first to fill that because this is such a small area, it'd be really hard to stretch this once it's already stuck on the sides versus starting here and then stretching over a large area. I think that's the way I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have to be really patient with this process because if I'm not, I'll end up with really bad quality work. Went ahead and applied the adhesive. So now I'm gonna wait 20 minutes for both sides to tack up and then join them together. You guys get the general idea of how to do this at this point. Now, you're gonna notice when you fold over, you're gonna end up with these little lines, but these are only temporary. It's kind of funky that it does this, but in about 15 minutes, these won't even be here anymore. I think it's because the glue kind of bunches up underneath there, but once it lays flat, it starts absorbing down into the foam, or it just kind of starts absorbing into itself, because this glue in particular, it dissolves back in itself. That's why you can keep using the same brushes over and over and over again. So these things will stiffen up, but the second you dip them back down in the glue, 
it softens right back up and you can use the brush again. It's super weird, but uh, yeah, it does this. So don't freak out if you end up having this weird line here right after you fold the material over and you're like, oh no, I did something wrong. Don't worry about it. Like I said, this will disappear. I'll come back in 15 minutes and show you what I mean. Here, it's only been five minutes and you can see it's already starting to disappear. You can still kind of see it right there, but in the next 10 minutes, it'll be completely gone. All right, so I'm starting to get the hang of this. And something that I've learned in my very limited experience doing this upholstery job is that there's a certain way that you can apply the vinyl that makes it a lot easier and less susceptible to bad wrinkles that you can't fix. I had a small error at the very top. I was able to fix it, but I kind of had to strategize how I was going to do it this way forward, I guess. So what I figured out kind of works is that once the surface is tacked up and it's dried. It's easy if you just take the material and you roll it towards yourself, making sure that there's no creases or anything. Just take your time and slowly roll it. Kind of like you're putting on a decal in a way. And I found that doing it this way can really prevent those wrinkles from happening. Because if you just try to pick this whole piece up and lay it over, air gets underneath it and it kind of makes these little voids. And then once it sticks down, this stuff does not want to come back up. And the second you try to pull this up, it'll start ripping the foam off. So I feel, I feel like this is kind of the best way to do it. And I'm gonna try to just do it in one take here, so. to victory okay all right moment of truth folks hope i didn't mess this up oh all right nice perfect okay cool so there's no wrinkles and you'll see tiny little raised areas those disappear after about 15 minutes so i'm used to these i'm not worried about those at all Okay, cool. So yeah, there's a little trick that I learned in the, I don't know, couple hours that I've been doing this. So then you just do that with the rest of it and then should have a really nice clean dash by the end of everything. Well, it's the final stretch, no pun intended. Really late, I'm tired. I wanna get this thing done already. <laughs> but I got the hair dryer out to relieve some of the stress on the vinyl in these tighter areas. So what I did is heated it up pressed in with my finger firmly until it cooled down and it gave me just enough stretch and material to meet the landing that's about a quarter of an inch down or lip, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to take, cut an X, put the adhesive on there and once it tacks up, I'll stick it all together and it should look pretty good. And over here, I took one of those small paint stir sticks, broke it in half, placed it in the VIN plate area and then obviously these little clamps are here till tomorrow. Hopefully that'll turn out pretty good. And this is the vent defrost area. I thought I was gonna have a lot more trouble with this, but hair dryer came to the rescue. No issues whatsoever. Let's see what else we got going on. Bent this under here. So the gauge cluster hood actually fits over this. So I'm not worried about it at all. Just you can't really see it. And I have this bent underneath here. And here's what it looks like before hitting it with the uh, hair dryer. Got these ends curved in. They look really nice. Same over here. This looks really nice. And then I'll have to do some witchcraft to make this work, but I think I got it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then tomorrow I can get it installed in the car. I am officially finished with this thing. I can go ahead and install it in the car. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Let's get some close-ups. Keep in mind, this is under very bright LED lights and cameras pick up everything, even stuff that your eyes don't really pick up on. Matches that OEM pattern really well. It's like you can see this little line right here 
on the camera, but in person, you can't really see it. So kind of interesting how cameras pick up certain things. This one little area is where I messed up. I mentioned that earlier in the video. You can kind of see it right here. It's where it kind of pulled foam back a little bit when I had a small wrinkle. So I was able to flatten that back out. Yeah, it's there, I know it's there, but if you're not looking for it, you won't see it. And then come around here, tuck this away as best as I could. Luckily, there's that A-pillar trim that goes there and covers this whole section. And then just for giggles, I went ahead and did my armrest because it was all falling apart and I was having trouble finding a new one that wasn't falling apart. So here we go, matches. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing installed in the car. Would you just look at it? So fresh, so clean. That's what I'm talking about. Hopefully this video is helpful to you guys. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.